Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is still retesting this critical level on the chart, while the price is still forming this pattern in the short term, while Bitcoin is also moving towards this major area of liquidity. So I'll be talking about that in just a moment, alongside Ethereum, still chopping around in this sideways price range, while Solana is now potentially rejecting from this critical area of resistance. So I'll be talking about all of that and more later in the video. So make sure you watch this video from start to finish so that you don't miss out on any of this important information. First of all, just before getting into the Bitcoin charts today, talking about the Bitcoin news today, and on Monday, we had another decent inflow into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. This time around, it was a net inflow of around 217 million US dollars flowing into the Bitcoin ETFs on Monday. And this was also a relatively spread out inflow across multiple different ETFs. And most importantly, we saw an inflow into Grayscale. Over the last two trading days on the Friday and the Monday, we did not end up seeing any outflows from Grayscale. Once again, on Friday and Monday, which is a good sign for the Bitcoin ETFs, at least as of right now. But at the time of recording this video, we do not yet have the numbers for Tuesday. And so for all we know, we may see an outflow on Tuesday if the price is dumping, for example. But we know from Friday and on Monday when the price was pumping, we know that these massive inflows into the spot Bitcoin ETFs that we saw on the last two trading days on Friday and Monday, we know that that can help the price of Bitcoin in the short term. And so if we continue to see these relatively large inflows like what we saw back on Friday and on Monday, then we should be expecting more bullish price action if these large net inflows continue. And with that being said, taking a look at the Bitcoin charts, this is on the three day time frame, and over the last one day, nothing has really changed here on the larger time frames like the three day or the weekly chart. And so as of right now, obviously the price of Bitcoin is still at a discount from the all time high. We've still kind of pulled back from the all time high with a recent bounce from the local lows, but overall, we're still within a much larger bullish trend. If we're looking at the significant lows and highs, we're clearly forming higher lows and higher highs which is a bullish trend on the larger timeframes, also known as a bull market. And so despite what happens in the short term, obviously in the day-to-day -day price action, we can see short-term bullish or short-term bearish price action. But despite what happens on smaller timeframes, that does not necessarily change what's happening here on the bigger picture, looking at the larger timeframes when we're zooming out. But with that being said, if we're taking a look at the DXY, what we are now seeing today is actually a bounce back to the upside in the DXY, which is important to pay attention to. Because like I've been saying over and over again here on the channel, if the DXY is bullish, that is quite often bearish for Bitcoin and crypto. And if the DXY is bearish, that is quite often bullish for Bitcoin and crypto. And so just over the last one week or so, that's exactly what we saw here with the drop to the downside in the DXY. We saw a spike to the upside in the price of Bitcoin as expected, but we are now seeing a small bounce to the upside in the DXY, which is resulting in a small pullback just in the much shorter term here in the price of Bitcoin. And so basically, if this pullback is over in the DXY and we're now going to see a further bounce back to the upside, then in that case, this might only be a small bounce to the upside in the price of Bitcoin during a larger pullback if the DXY continues further to the upside in more of a bullish trend. And so either way, as always, I'll be sure to keep you up to date on what's happening here in the DXY and many other important charts in these videos every day. So make sure you subscribe to this channel with notifications turned on and click all for notifications so that you don't miss out on any of these important update videos. But with that being said, even though the DXY is giving us a short-term bearish signal resulting in a slight pullback in the price of Bitcoin in the short term, if we're taking a look at this daily Bitcoin chart, as of right now, the daily Bitcoin RSI is still trading well above this previous descending line of resistance. And so simply based on the RSI and also based on the daily Bitcoin MACD, technically speaking, these are still currently looking more bullish than bearish. Because just a couple of days ago, we saw a bullish cross confirm here in the daily Bitcoin MACD. And over the last couple of days, technically speaking, if we're looking at this histogram in the MACD indicator on the daily time frame, this is starting to show more bullish momentum building up for the price of Bitcoin. 
And if we're simply looking at the last couple of times this has happened, obviously what came next over the next few weeks or so was more of a bullish move in the price, despite seeing short-term bearish price action here and there. And so just keep that in mind, as of right now, the MACD and the RSI are technically looking more bullish than bearish. They're basically starting to flip back into the bullish direction after correcting. But the DXY obviously is starting to show a little bit of a short-term bearish signal. So keep that in mind. And if we're taking a look at this daily Bitcoin chart, like I said in my last video here on the channel, the price of Bitcoin is basically retesting this important line on the chart, which was previous resistance and should now act as new support. And that line right there is sitting at around 62.8K approximately. And at least at the time of recording this video, we have not yet confirmed a daily candle close well below that line on the chart, which means technically speaking, this breakout has not yet been invalidated. But once again, like I said yesterday, if we actually see a daily candle close in the price of Bitcoin below that level on the chart, then that would invalidate this breakout to the upside and invalidate this bullish pattern and the price target for the pattern. But for as long as the price can hold above that level, and more importantly, if we actually bounce from that level, confirming a successful retest and flipping that previous resistance into new support, then in that case, that would further confirm the breakout to the upside. And once again, in that case, we'd still have this bullish price target sitting in between around 72 to 74,000 based on these local highs. And so at least when we're talking about the short-term moves here in the price of Bitcoin, this is a make or break moment. This is an important decision over the next couple of days here for the price of Bitcoin when we're talking about the short-term moves. And if we're actually zooming further into the short term, taking a look at the four hour time frame, as of right now, the price of Bitcoin is still potentially forming this inverse head and shoulders pattern. Because at least as of right now, we've already formed the left shoulder and the head, and right now we are potentially forming the right shoulder. But in order to actually complete the formation phase and confirm the pattern, we need to see a bounce sometime soon over the next couple of days or so back up towards this neckline, and then we need to see a confirmed breakout above that neckline. And that neckline is sitting at around 64.8K approximately. So once again, we need to see candle closes above 64.8K at some point in the next few days in order to confirm this pattern right here. But basically, if it takes any longer than a few days in order to see that breakout above the neckline, or if we pull back further in the short term, let's just say below 61,000, then in those scenarios, the right shoulder would become too large compared to the left shoulder, which means that would essentially invalidate the formation phase for the pattern. But either way, once again, this pattern is not yet even complete or confirmed. We still need to see the right shoulder form and then break out in order to actually confirm the pattern and the price target, which by the way, the price target for this pattern, if it actually confirms, is sitting at around 73.6 to 73.7K. But once again, it's important to understand that as of right now, that price target is not yet active and is not yet in play because we have not yet confirmed the breakout for this pattern. And as for my trading strategy right now, as I've been saying since all the way back down here, I've already scaled into a long position at these lower levels, as I've shared here on the channel over the last half a week or so. And as of right now, my stop loss for this trade is already above my entry, which means in the worst case scenario, if we just crash right now, I still profit from this trade. And also, let's just say if we potentially invalidate the formation phase for this inverse head and shoulders pattern and invalidate the breakout for this falling wedge, then potentially if we start to see more of those short-term bearish signals, especially if the DXY continues spiking to the upside, then I may also look to take further profits or just close that position at a higher level rather than waiting for the stop loss to be hit at a lower level. But once again, either way, no matter if the price goes up or down from here, this is still a profitable trade. So if you followed me with taking this trade at these lower levels, congratulations, because no matter what happens right now in the price of Bitcoin, you are making money if your stop loss is in profits. And if you want to take trades just like this in the price of Bitcoin or any other crypto, personally, I'm taking this trade right here over on Bybit. So I'll make sure to leave a link to Bybit down below this video in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link down below this video to make a Bybit account and deposit on that account, then you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus, but only if you use that link down below this video. 
And also, if you use that link, it will take you to this page right here where you can claim an exclusive 200 USDT airdrop position. And so this is basically a free $200 trade when you open a Bybit account, but this only works if you use the link down below this video to make a Bybit account. And so if you're going to be trading crypto anyway, you might as well check this out. Once again, first link down below this video. But for whatever reason, if you cannot access Bybit or if you cannot KYC on Bybit, there is also Bitflex, which is another crypto exchange similar to Bybit, but you don't need KYC for Bitflex. And so I will also make sure to leave a link to Bitflex down below this video as an alternative crypto exchange. And if we're taking a quick look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we can see right now the price of Bitcoin is targeting a major level of liquidity just in the short term, which is slightly below the current price. And I have been warning about this recently here on the channel. I've been talking about this level of liquidity just below the current price, sitting at around 62.3K to 62,500. And so like I've already been saying just recently here on the channel in my latest videos, we're most likely potentially going to hit that lower level of liquidity before potentially seeing any more bullish price action. Because usually the price of Bitcoin moves towards where there's a lot of liquidity, especially if that liquidity is close to the price. But if we're zooming out to a larger time frame on the liquidation heat map, we can still see a massive amount of liquidity above the price on larger timeframes at around 67.3K to 67.6K. And so once again, this is exactly what I've been talking about recently here on the channel. We're most likely going to see a bit of a drop in the short term to take out that short term liquidity to the downside. But we still have billions of dollars of liquidity above the price at around 67 and a half thousand, which is likely going to drag the price towards that level at some point. And once we eventually see the price of Bitcoin cross above 67 and a half thousand, once again, that will liquidate billions of dollars of short positions, which can potentially result in a short squeeze further to the upside towards this higher level of liquidity, which is sitting at around 71 and a half thousand to around 72,000. So basically right around these local highs. And if we're taking a quick look at the Bitcoin and crypto funding rates across multiple different exchanges, right now these funding rates are sitting relatively neutral with some funding rates below neutral because basically the neutral funding rate is 0.01%. And so on some exchanges, we're seeing that at the moment because basically if the funding rates drop further and further below neutral, so if they go further and further into negative territory, then that means the short positions are having to pay much more fees to the long positions. And so basically negative funding rates incentivizes shorts to close and longs to open. And when short positions close, that adds buying pressure back into the underlying asset. And when longs open, that also adds buying pressure into the underlying asset. And so basically, the further below neutral that the funding rates are, the more bullish that is for the market. And the further above neutral that the funding rates are, the more bearish that is for the market. But anyway, if we're taking a look at Ethereum on the daily time frame, right now the price of ETH is still trading in between this support and this resistance for this potential massive falling wedge pattern. Right now, this support line is still sitting at around 2870 and this line of resistance is sitting at around 3340. And so on the daily time frame, not much has really changed here over the last one day. We're still in this pullback phase in the market. We have not fully confirmed a bullish trend reversal in terms of the short term trend and momentum here. Because once again, in order to flip more bullish, we ideally, first of all, need to form a new higher high above this previous high and ideally a breakout above this line of resistance right here in order to actually confirm the initial breakout for the falling wedge. And if we're taking a look at the 12 hour ETH to US dollar chart, right now the price of ETH is still playing out that perfect rejection from this area of resistance that I've also been talking about over and over again here on the channel. And that area of resistance is still sitting in between 3.2K to 32.50. And we also have some more resistance at around 3350 and those higher levels of resistance have not changed over the last one day. And as for short term support, we still have this area sitting in between around 2850 to 2950 acting as major support for the price. And once again, as I've also been saying over and over again recently here on the channel, right now the price of ETH is basically in a massive sideways consolidation, basically a choppy sideways price range in between support and resistance. 
And there's still a lot of people out there that get bored with this sideways price action in the market, but believe it or not, this choppy sideways price action is a gold mine in crypto. You can make a lot of easy money in choppy sideways price action just like this. And if you want to know how to do that, then stick around to the end of this video to find out more. But first, taking a quick look at the price of Solana on the eight hour time frame, And right now, Solana is running into this critical area of resistance and potentially playing out a bit of a short term rejection. Because first of all, we have this area of resistance sitting in between around 150 to 155. And if we're looking at the eight hour candle closes, we just saw a perfect short term rejection from around 155. But above that level, we also have more resistance closer towards 160, which we almost pretty much perfectly rejected from at around 160 if we're looking at the candle wick. And above that level, we also have this area of resistance based on previous support sitting in between 167 to 172. And now if we actually play out more of a short term rejection from this resistance right here, then in that case, I would expect support first of all at around 145, but more support down towards around 140 based on this line right here. And below that we have significant support in between 120 to 128. But technically speaking, this bullish divergence on the eight hour time frame is still active. We have not yet seen any bearish trend reversal in terms of the short term here for the RSI or the price action. But basically, if we start breaking back below important levels of support in the price chart, or if the RSI starts forming new lower lows or lower highs again, then that can invalidate this bullish divergence. And so basically the situation right now is the price could still be within a bullish relief, but we're running into this critical resistance, which is where the price is struggling at as expected. And we're simply waiting for more confirmation for the next short term move to actually start playing out. Once again, either a confirmed breakout above this resistance in order to initiate the next short term move to the next resistance. Or like I just said, if we start breaking below some of these short term levels of support, then we could potentially return down towards those lower levels of support in more of a choppy sideways price range like what Ethereum is doing. And if you want to trade these moves in the price of any crypto, once again, check out those links down below this video. And if you want to know how to trade crypto, no matter if the price is bullish, bearish, or chopping around sideways in a sideways price range, you can make money from all of that price action by watching these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how you can profit from bullish or bearish price action using long positions or short positions. And the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.